Hello and welcome to Capitol Hill. Former New South Wales Premier Bob Carr has joined the ranks of the Senate and of the Gillard Ministry today, being sworn into the Senate and then only recently sworn in as the new Foreign Affairs Minister. There may be an old, a new face in the Senate, but the Upper House will be dealing with what's a now relatively old issue. In the next couple of weeks, it will be debating the mining tax, but it won't be debating the small business tax cut that goes with it. That will have to wait until Budget Week, although exposure legislation on the mining on the business tax cut will be released tomorrow. Joining me to discuss these issues and much more besides are Labor MP Kelvin Thompson and Liberal MP Kelly O'Dwyer. Welcome to you both. Hi, Linda. We'll start with Bob Carr, who got straight down to work even before he was sworn into the Senate today. I think it is striking that 18 months out of an election, there's simply a six-point gap between the two sides. And I think it's very interesting that Tony Abbott's support has gone down. I think people are waking up to the fact that Tony Abbott, Tony Abbott, I thought it was over breakfast, Tony Abbott is like the, a, a, a cheapskate hypnotist in a run-down circus. You're saying to the electorate, look into my eyes, you are growing weaker. No more boats. Look into my eyes, you are growing weaker in Labor's big bad tax. Look into my eyes, you are growing weaker. Debt and deficit. He's trying to hypnotise the electorate with these slogans. And I mean, it is a very cheap performance. And if you paid five bucks to get into Worth Circus, and that's all you got from the hypnotist, you'd ask for your money back. Kelvin, Bob Carr seemed quite comfortable attacking Tony Abbott uh, this morning, but as a former state leader, is he likely to find the atmosphere somewhat different in federal parliament? Oh, well, it's, it's always uh, uh, different from parliament to parliament, but there's no doubt that parliamentary skills are transferable and there's no doubt that Bob Carr has parliamentary skills and experience in spades. So it, it is very clear that he will make a significant contribution in the national parliament. Kelly, uh, coalition senators were very kind to Bob Carr when he was sworn into the Senate, shaking his hand. Does the nice, do the niceties end today? Well, look, we all hope that Bob Carr is actually going to be a good foreign minister for Australia. I mean, we would agree with the Labor Party. We actually hope that will be the case. Unfortunately, there's a lot of repair work for him to do already. Kevin Rudd did leave rather a legacy behind him, and so has Julia Gillard. We have to repair our relationship with Indonesia. We have to repair our relationship with East Timor over the border protection thought bubble. We have to repair our relationship as well with Japan, who was first snubbed when Kevin Rudd decided not to visit there when he first went overseas. There's a lot of repair work to be done, and of course Bob Carr has his own legacy issues to deal with. He's got his legacy issues both as Premier, as somebody who was Premier for over 10 years and did nothing for the infrastructure and build of one of the most significant states here in this country. And he's also got legacy issues with his foreign policy pronouncements that he made when he was, as he put it, a private citizen that are completely in conflict with the statements that have been made by the Prime Minister. Who can forget, of course, that he said about uh, the President Obama when he delivered his speech to the Parliament, that he delivered a strange speech. I mean, this this is, this is unusual to be coming from the, the man who is now to be our foreign minister. Kelvin, along with the experience, does come, as Kelly has pointed out, some, some baggage. Is it fair enough for Bob Carr to say comments made on his blog were those of a private citizen and he's now a member of the government, so he won't talk about those? Well, well clearly now he is a member of the government, uh, Lyndall, and... Uh, the foreign policy which he puts forward will be the foreign policy of the government. Having said that, I think the fact that he has the experience that he has, the fact that he has the demonstrated interest in foreign affairs that he has, uh, means that he has the capacity to be a very good foreign affairs minister. And, and for example, in areas that are close to my heart, like population and environment, he's had very interesting things to say about global population issues, about protection of the environment. I'm looking forward to initiatives and to his contribution on questions like the global population being 7 billion and tracking for 9 or 10 billion by the mid-century. If, if we could move on now to the mining tax, because we've got a few things to get through. Kelvin, the, the business tax cut, particularly the small business tax cut, isn't part of the legislation that will be put before the Senate. It will, that will be left until the budget. 
given the government seems to be talking a lot about its commitment to small business nowadays, shouldn't, shouldn't the, the business tax cut be part of the legislation that goes to the Senate now? Well, the, the government has to organise the legislative program in what it regards as an appropriate order, uh, and it has decided that getting the mineral resource rent tax through the parliament uh, has to be the number one item of business. And the important thing, frankly, is to get the opposition to support this legislation rather than to oppose it. I, I think that a lot of Australians would have been disgusted this week to see the revelations about uh, Gina Reinhart and the reason she was out there with a placard in 2010 was so that she could provide more for her children by way of that life of privilege uh, the multi-million dollar homes with waterfront views and uh, the private jets and the endless overseas holidays and so on what Labor says is that it's appropriate to give some of that money, they are, this is Australian resources we're talking about after all, some of that money to ordinary working Australians. Higher superannuation incomes, tax cuts for small business, infrastructure projects. So we think that's the priority we should have and that the opposition should now support our legislation. Kelly, when the, when the business tax cut legislation does come before the parliament, you'll be in a position of voting against it. Are you comfortable with the way that will look? Well, well, I think let, let's go back to your earlier point where, where the, the opposition has been highlighting the fact that the Labor Party is in fact all talk. They talk about small business, but Bob Brown has actually called them on it today. He said, well, show us exactly what it is that you're going to do. It's a matter and, of and trust. And the exposure draft will be out tomorrow. It's, it's, it's a matter of trust. And I think Andrew Wilkie has learned he can't trust this government. The Australian people have certainly learned that they can't trust the Prime Minister. Now Bob Brown has even said that he doesn't trust the Treasurer to remain true to what it is that he's promised to deliver. Now, we'll have a look at what they propose, but we say that, quite rightly, Australians do deserve a fair share from our mineral resources. There are already royalties in place and there are already company taxes in place. We think that this is the only mining tax that has been orchestrated by only the three major miners in the room with little regard for any proper consultation process and we think that that is inherently flawed. Given some of the coalition's criticism of the mining tax saying it would damage the industry, why, why isn't the coalition worried by states putting up their mining royalties time and again? Well royalties have been with us from time immemorial. This is quite a typical thing to be able to have royalties. It is well understood, it is very certain. So and that, that the tax government, rise isn't, the, the, isn't, the government, won't damage well, it's, the it's, industry. It's, 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 a matter, it's a matter for each of those states. It's a matter for each of those states to make a determination about what royalties are appropriate in consultation, obviously, with the industry and with uh, an understanding as to the impact that it will have on investment and on jobs. Now, this is something that already occurs. As I said before, we already have a company tax rate. And the way that this government has designed the mining tax, it will, in fact, be paying out money as a result of these raised royalties. It will actually have a hit to the budget bottom line rather than bringing in money. I mean, this is the only treasurer of this country who could actually design a tax which will have a hit to the budget bottom line. Look, the question here is whose side are the opposition on? Are they on the side of ordinary Australian workers who deserve higher retirement incomes, on the side of small business who deserve a tax cut, or are they on the side of the, the richest, most powerful Australians, Gina Reinhart and her $17 billion and that life of privilege for the family. But the as question Kelly for the Liberals out, is mining whose companies side... Do, mining companies do pay tax they, through royalties they, and they, company tax. They do indeed, but we've seen a situation in the last few years of an unprecedented increase in the wealth generated from mining. These are resources which, after all, are owned by the Australian people and can only be dug up and used once. If we do not spread the, the, the wealth... But company to taxes it, to go up as well. As their profits it, increase, it, company taxes the, the, the fact, increase. The fact is that the mining boom has been great in terms of the mining sector, but has been difficult in terms of manufacturing, tourism, education, retail and so on. It is appropriate that we put in place taxation arrangements which will spread this wealth more fairly to ordinary Australians. We'll, we'll move on now. The independent MP Rob Oakshot is putting his own version of legislation to allow offshore processing into Parliament, making it a condition of a country where the processing takes place, that it be party to the Bali regional process. Kelvin, that would allow people to go to Malaysia or Nauru and also to Iran, Syria or North Korea. Is that acceptable? Look, I, I think the important point here, Lyndall, is that Rob Oakeshott is trying to solve what is a serious problem, a serious issue. No doubt that there is a serious issue in relation to refugees and asylum seekers. And he is putting forward 
legislative proposals in good faith and the government is prepared to examine and entertain those proposals, uh, whereas the opposition just says we're not going to support them. And the, the fact is that the opposition is insincere about this. They don't want to stop the boats coming because they regard the boats as a, a politically useful issue for them. They are not acting in good faith here. Kelly, the opposition changed its mind on processing in countries that are signatories to the Refugee Convention. You weren't worried about it before, you are now. Why not change your position again to allow those countries party to the Bali process on people smuggling to be the third countries, to be the countries for offshore processing? Well, Lyndall, the only people here who are being disingenuous are the government. The government, of course, have created this problem with respect to a border protection problem where we have thousands of people now coming by boat because of the dismantling of the border protections that were in place under the Howard government. Now this is a problem that they have created and we have told them what the solution is. The solution is of course to return to Nauru, to actually set up to temporary protection visas again. This is a solution that we are absolutely prepared to support. We've supported it before, it's been successful before, we'll support it again. The government isn't prepared to entertain this. Rob Oakeshott has brought forward pretty much the government's bill reheated. Um, we believe that our solution is the best solution to stop people from losing their lives on these very risky journeys. If I could go to one final issue, Kelly. Um, Joe Hockey has said today, the Shadow Treasurer has said today, that, that the opposition's policies are uh, finalised, they've been costed, yet Andrew Robb said on the 5th of March that none of the major policies had been finalised. Do you know what the situation actually is? Well, there's obviously a, an iterative process with respect to policy. Until the election is called, um, the final policies won't be actually released. Uh, but we are going through a policy process right now. It is a very strong policy process and we are costing those policies um, you know, on the way through so that we are ready if an election is called. If this government decides to actually get honest with the Australian people and call an election, we'll be ready with fully costed policies. Kelvin, the, the government keeps calling on the opposition to release its, release its policies to say how it's going to cut the budget and save money, but the opposition won't see the final budget figures before the election till into the election campaign. Why should the opposition have to put its policies out now when it won't know exactly what it's facing until the election campaign begins. Well, the, the opposition's been demanding an election now. You know, they want an election, but with apologies to Jack Nicholson, they can't handle an election. They are not ready for one be, because they do not have uh, uh, policies concerning where cuts are going to be made. The fact that Tony Abbott can say we're going to have a commission of audit which will look at all these things after an election in the event that we win one ought to make every Australian suspicious. John Howard did this after 1996. And students, and, stu and students got a it in that, black hole. that was uh, that, which was solved within a year or two. This was an invention no, it where, where, whereby students got it in the neck, higher hex fees, aged care got it in the neck. There are a whole lot of areas which should be very worried about the fact that Tony Abbott says, I'm going to have a commission of audit and I'm not going to tell you beforehand where these cuts are going to be made. And that's where we'll have to leave it. Kelly O'Dwyer and Kelvin Thompson, thank you very much for Thanks, your time. Thanks, Thanks, Thank Calvin. you. And thank you for joining Capitol Hill today. Please be with us at the same time tomorrow. Good night.